Big tuna, big black tuna. I have never. Look at this. Is that? That's is it me or did someone try to eat this? Those are. I'll, I'll have it playing on the screen did here you right now. In the face? No, I got me right in the nipple. You, you guys always hear us talking about bonita. This is an actual bonita, an, an Atlantic bonito. And look at this. They got freaking teeth. Dude, How cool Kylie's is that? Kylie's doing a comparison. You, you can get in here, Kylie. Teeth. No teeth. Wait. Get in here. Get in here. All right, look. Nothing. You're gonna put your finger in that one too? No way. So that's a, that's what we call bonita. That's a false albacore. This is a real bonita. I'm super excited to do a catch, clean, cook with one of these. You ever seen one of these? I wouldn't say these are rare in Florida, but they're certainly not common. They don't you, you don't get them that often. Maybe we've, we're, we've never gotten one. Maybe we're gonna we catch a, maybe we're gonna catch a striper next. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> Here, hold them up. I want to take your face. Oh, Nina! A real one! Hey! Oh, another one! How about them apples? How about them apples? What Look do you at that! Say about Look at that! Too. I don't know what the heck is going on today, guys, but we have literally caught three true bonitas. So for all you northerners up there who always make fun of us and say those aren't real bonitas, those are albies, we caught legit bonita today, and. This guy is very excited to try it, aren't you? I am. Wait, ready to see what the meat looks like. Everybody, I remember Sam, you guys have seen Sam in our videos. That's who we went down to the Keys with and fished in Connecticut with. He says it's probably his favorite fish. So, Sam, we got some real bonitas for the kitchen tonight. Y'all are Chris so. Is up. Maybe I got Jew fished. We're not in Sebastian. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everyone comes down here from up north. Oh, it must be a Jewfish. What was oh, that? Yeah. Tighten the drag, huh? No, you know you got sharks. Unbelievable. You, you don't have a jig sharks. anymore, do you? Do you still have your jig? No. No? You got cut off? I'm not gonna lie, but you were pretty high sticking that thing. <laughs> we got video evidence <laughs> if you want to watch later. <laughs> Should have just let him outrun it. No, he got shark. Oh, you can feel it. Babe's on a monster. Hers is an AJ. Oh no, she's got an AJ. <laughs> Mine just got shark automatic. Hers is an AJ. Woo! What are you doing, Berkey? Um. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm close to the wreck. I know I'm close to the wreck. I got hit on like the second jig, like Chris said, and then it didn't eat it. You better stop him, you better stop him. My drag's tight though. No, it could be tighter, it could be tighter. No! You got me in the wreck. It's gonna be one of those days. That was a good one. No. I haven't hooked an AJ like that in a long time. That was a good one. Damn! We were here just a couple days ago, couldn't get anything. And every single time we've dropped down so far, we've caught something. Well, hooked something. Wish we haven't caught anything. Haven't landed anything yet. All right, guys, so this is what we're doing. As Brookie re-rigs, I'm dropping live pilchards down. Chris Lowe is jigging a vertical jig. That's what Brooke just hooked her fish on. And this wreck, this time of year, is known to hold African pompano, AJs, predominantly those two things. And what Brooke most likely just hooked was an AJ and they want to be as close to the wreck as possible so they're not necessarily going inside the wreck but if they're going on the other side of it they have a really good chance of cutting you off or there's always sharks that hang around the wrecks too and they 
will a lot of times actually eat your amberjacks. All the way up to 70 pound amberjacks will get them cut in half. So that's what we're doing right now. We got hit like right next to the boat, didn't we? Yep. Is there something chasing it? Oh my god! Mother trucker! You're your I'm telling you, there's a cruda down there eating all our fish! <laughs> <laughs> hey, we know that there's cruda down there. That was my hockey bowl. <laughs> that was my hockey bowl. <laughs> Dang it, man! We can have lunch. I guess we can have lunch with this you one. You cut it and eat this, so. Victor, you can have some sushi. That was a good one, too. That was a cuda, not a shark. That was a cuda. I saw him. No, I saw him we, flash on it right the there. The next drift we should put out on uh, the top eight. I am not <laughs> getting this fish shark. <laughs> he was getting chased. Here, give me the leader. It's a cuda. What? You're kidding. <laughs> it's a cuda. Is it? Yeah. I told you, dude, they're, they're fierce. Oh! They're fierce on this wreck. There you go. We got a, a nice Palm Beach release. <laughs> oh my god, it can't even close the bale. Smoke! Get it, man, get it. Here you go. We got something on. Stop. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, I got the Cuda. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Good. That's <laughs> Are you kidding that's not me? It. No, that's, that that's is, my belly. I need that. That's, that's not the monster we're after. I'm saying it's not, okay? I'm gonna yell at him. You couldn't even see the, over the all right, guys. Kylie's gonna keep this for sword bait. Apparently, she uh, rigs sword bait, so we're gonna give it to her. She's gonna use the belly. I think her family's big into sword fishing. We got a cooler full of fish. We got bonitos, kudos, which will be used for swordfish baits, false albies. That's what we Floridians call bonitos. Chris caught a, a jack in the intercoastal earlier that we're gonna keep for shark bait. Cooler's full. We got our quarantine food for the week. So I'll catch you guys at the dock. So check this out guys. I know a lot of you at home are probably like, why do you guys keep so many fish? Well, everything we keep has a purpose. Chris Lowe is going home with a bag full of tuna for his parents. Kylie is uh, whipping up some bonita strips and some sword or some cuda belly. What are you gonna do with that? Try and catch a swordfish. Nice one, big one. So her family is really big into sword fishing. Basically any type of firm fish's belly like this. This is the cuda that we caught earlier. They're gonna try to turn that into a swordfish. And then what she's doing right now is slabbing out a bonita, the false albacore that we caught, and making strips. So the strips that you guys see right there, take a look at the difference between a real strip and the bonita strips or the bait strips that we troll. So we caught all our fish today on this. This is a bait strip. These are the fake strips that you guys always see us fishing in our videos. This is what they're supposed to mimic. 99% of the guys out here are trolling these. These are real bonita strips. So this is what she's doing. She takes the slab off of the bonita and then you wanna get all of the meat off until they're very thin like this. And then most people will salt them. I, on the other hand, much prefer the fake stuff, which I'll have linked below. This is the bait strips that we always fish, so I'll have those linked before, below for you guys. He's letting you get really close to him. Come on, he's like, come on, just drop it. We haven't seen that bird in a wild bird, have we? I know. Look at him, he's clumsy, what is he doing? Mm -hmm. Eat it. There you go. Oh, now I got wrapped on your beach. This is an Atlantic Benito. So many times you guys hear us say we catch bonita, which this is an actual bonita, not false albacore. Take a look at those teeth. It's like a crazy hybrid of a kingfish slash mackerel slash bonita slash tuna. These are cold water fish. I know they catch them in the Northeast. They catch them in North Carolina, South Carolina. They don't really venture into Florida that much. So it's pretty rare when you catch them. Both times we caught them, we caught them in pairs, which means they were definitely schooling up. So let's go ahead, get the rest of these guys in the cooler and flay it up and we'll see what the meat looks like. But we're gonna go right behind the head just like we do with any fish, around the peck fin. So we're gonna go from the head all the way down to the tail. We got our Dexter. And um, if you guys don't know, so I have a deal with Dexter to hook you guys up. You guys can save 20% off all Dexter knives 
I'll I'll have the code on the screen. It's land shark, and it's also going to be linked below. So we do that. Now we're going to find the spine and just work our way up along the spine towards the head. The meat looks very good. Get to the backbone, break through the pin bones. See, I don't, I didn't know how to approach this. If I should have approached it like a tuna or a regular fish. I mean, it's not white like a snapper, but it's mm, not like a no. bonita. No, certainly not like a bonita. But I know a lot of people say that this is their favorite fish. It's actually not it, bad at all. No, it looks really, it's almost pink. So this is the bloodline and where the pin bones lie. So I'm just going to take out the entire center of the fish because that's the bloodiest part of the fish anyway. Okay. So there's the bloodline. We get rid of that. Let's see if we can skin this up without leaving any of the skin on. The skin is very thin, and fish with thin skin, you tend to pierce through. So I'm going to try to go a little bit above the skin and leave a little bit of meat on the filet. Yeah, it looks like a yellow jack to me. It, uh, it kind of does. Yeah, kind of. So I see I leave a, just a tiny bit. Kylie, there's your strips right there. Those Couldn't you nice. use that as a strip? Yeah. Check that out. Put that to the side. Not All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you guys in the kitchen. And then run Scene away. one, take one. Action. <laughs> all right, guys. So we're in the kitchen now. And first of all, cheers to you guys, wherever you're at. Wherever you're at in the world. I know it's a crazy time in the world, but cheers to you guys. Hope you're staying safe, happy, and healthy. Okay, we got some soy sauce here. So, I, like I said, I've never made bonito before. I've never eaten bonito, but it looks like a really good sashimi style fish. So, it doesn't have the firm texture of tuna. It's a very velvety, smooth, uh, like butter melt in your mouth texture. Tell me one, I'm gonna try one. Okay. Here you go. I'll, I'll trade you. Camera for fish. It does like melt in your mouth. You see what I mean? It's weird. You know The texture is just so different from tuna. It's so good. I love it. So what we're going to do is make a piccata style bonito tonight. So we have some flour. We're going to season with garlic powder, black pepper, salt, and a little bit of oregano. I'm gonna just dredge our bonita lightly in that seasoned flour. So it's gonna season our fish as well as give it a nice little crispy coat. We're gonna cook our fish first, set it aside, and then make our sauce, and then heat our fish back through in our sauce. So I just have a uh, stainless steel pan with some avocado oil. We're also making some asparagus on the side. So we got some olive oil. I'm gonna put our asparagus straight in. Kinda of roll them around. Hit them with the salt and pepper. I'm excited, man. Yeah, I know. This is what I live for. Okay, second batch. Just take a look at these. Brooke just got some B-roll of them. I'm telling you guys, these are going to be a game changer. We've tried so many fish, but that texture, like I told you, when I ate it sashimi style, it just melts in your mouth. I'm leaving all the brown bits in the pan. We're gonna add a little, a little bit of olive oil. Two tablespoons of butter. This is about one head of garlic, but it's a very, it's a really small head of garlic. Okay, and this is our seasoned flour from earlier. I'm gonna add in a little bit to thicken up our sauce and make like a little roux. We're gonna add a little bit more butter to get it a little more rooey and a little less doughy, as Brooke would say. Okay, we're gonna add our chicken stock.
So I'm constantly mixing it because I don't want the I don't want the flour to cook like they would be. Uh, what would you call it? I don't want them to turn into dumplings, you know. So I'm really trying to incorporate the flour into the sauce to thicken it up. And all those brown bits that um. The uh, pieces of fish that got stuck to the pan, that's all caramelized and it's all being incorporated into the sauce. All those brown bits are floating in that sauce right now. So check this out. This is the consistency of our piccata sauce. Almost like a, a chicken gravy. Now I have a can of capers. I'm gonna add in the capers as well as all the vinegar that's in there. And then some fresh parsley. From my garden. From Brooks Garden, which has been flourishing, by the way, in case you guys are wondering at home. We're gonna put our fish in to heat them through, coat them in that sauce as well. So we got our bonita piccata, bonito, our asparagus, and our pasta. Start there. Start there. You're getting two pieces of fish right off the bat. You get some sauce, with the capers. There you go. Thank you, sir. Enjoy. Your sauce you made is so good. And the fish was like mushy. When we were like eating wow. it at sashimi, it's not <clears throat> mushy at all anymore. It's really good. Hold on, I need another bite to give it accurate. Give me your capers. Get out, get, out. get off my capers. <laughs> Chris, so good. You like it? It is so good, yeah. There we go. Mm. Tastes like chicken. It does. You're kidding. I no. swear on my life, dude. It doesn't even taste like fish. I've never had a fish that Thank tasted God like chicken. Thank God you put four pieces in. They're really, really good. I would put this in the top five best fish I've had. No way! Wow. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. Like, put it there, Chris. Like, I would eat this over Cobia and Snook any day. Gotcha. What? Really Chris didn't know that people actually ate capers. He thought they were just for, sh for show. <laughs> Why did you have to make me sound dumb? <laughs> he thought they were just for show, so he's being enlightened tonight. I'm eating one right now. Look at this. The sauce is so good, Vic. Thank you, babe. There's a good piece. Tell you right now, top three. Not top five, top three. And the only reason it's top three is because I can't think of the other two, but this is freaking amazing. I'm not kidding, it is so good. Oh my gosh. Melts in your mouth. No fishy taste, texture delicious, flavor delicious. It's got a flavor, it's, it's not a, a boring fish. Like we had Wahoo here the other day. Wahoo's very dry, like I described it. I like Wahoo, but this is, I all I gotta say is I wish we had Atlantic Bonito more where we live. We don't have that many. This is the first time we've ever caught them, and I've been fishing out here my whole life. It's so good, guys. If you ever get a chance to get your hands on Atlantic Bonito, highly suggest you do so. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I know it was a little crazy and out of order, but that's because we did two videos from that day, so I also have a like a kind of how to catch blackfin tuna, catch clean cook coming up from the same day. And I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity to do two separate videos, especially with the fish as cool as the Atlantic Bonito. I'm telling you guys right now, it is amazing. I mean, really amazing. And you guys have seen so many different species on this channel and it is just, I can't wait. I hope we catch more. That's all I'm going to say. So like I said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in that next video. <laughs>